What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? Today on the show, we're going to be looking at a flat earther, David, who apparently claims that we shouldn't be able to see the sun from 93 million miles away. And he can't really explain why that is a thing, but I try to press him and make him, you know, relay that information. So we're going to be taking a look at that. I would love to hear all of your thoughts down below in the comment section, so be sure to leave those as you're watching them. If you like this video, don't forget to share it out and everything. All right. <laughs> Y'all ready for this stupid shit? But what I'm saying is that the numbers that you're plugging into these formulas, those numbers are not are not right. I don't think they're right at all. Then uh, well, go okay. out, do the uh, observations, and verify it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, but if, I, if I can... Go ahead, Jeezy. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, if I can, I mean, I, personally, I feel like Reds has done more than enough to defend uh, the globe model, if you will, the normal model. I'm kind of curious what David thinks. Like, how, how, like, do you think that the sun is 3,000 miles away and 30 miles across? Uh, do you have some other I, kind I of claim, idea? Uh, I don't claim to know exactly what, how far it is. I, I, don't, I don't claim at all to know exactly how far it is. I, I mean, I mean, um, the, the, the distance, I know it's a, a closer than. 93 million miles away I, and I, I don't believe any that far like uh, like the stars are not okay. that far well okay uh, you say if I can if I can stop I'm, I'm very interested in what you have to say but I, I do have to stop real quick because uh, you say that you know for a fact that it's not 93 million miles away but you're not telling us how you know this how do you know that it's actually closer than that I mean, I mean you're, you're not you're not gonna like my answer but it was because I don't I don't, I, was, uh, we, I don't think we could see that far I don't think we could see 93 million miles away i, I mean I it just it would, we wouldn't be able to see that and, and like like you know as okay. far as the stars and the light years away i don't i don't think we could see light years away i, I mean I'm, i don't have super okay. bad eyes i only have 20 years. okay okay how do you know that we can't see that far away like what physical property of reality prevents us from seeing light that's 55 million light years away or uh how many light seconds is it away from the sun i think it's like eight light seconds from the sun yeah. Uh, eight, what, eight what, light minutes. Light yeah. minutes. Sorry, not seconds. Sorry, that's way too fast. Uh, but light minutes. What prevents us from seeing that? Well, I mean, there's a few things. That, like, like first off, like, in the, the, of course, it's gonna go to the size of it. But, but if you were to kind of bring it down to earth and uh, look at look at it like a light bulb from a distance, I mean, it, it go it, from a distance. We 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 end up not seeing it after so far. I mean, the light light um it, it light doesn't just keep on going on forever. It just, it's it stops somewhere it, it doesn't just keep on going and so i mean 90, 93 million well, miles away that's way too far for yeah well i mean the light dims out because of uh of the spread of the light coming from the light source and how powerful the light source is considering the fact that our sun is a very powerful light source I mean, if it's bright enough, don't you think we can see it from pretty far away? Because, I mean, if you think about it, if you use your light bulb thing here, then we sh really shouldn't be able to see, like, lighthouses from very far away. But yet, those are pretty big navigational tools that ships, uh, at least mm -hmm. in the past years, I'm sure they still use them now, to know where coastlines are and stuff like that. So, I mean, how do you explain that? I mean, the whole principle is... The brighter you make the light, the farther away you can see it. Also, the elevation or how high the light source is off the ground, that makes a big difference, too. But we're just talking about how uh, luminescent the light is. I mean, you're, 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 correct in everything, you're correct in everything you say. and I, I, Everything that you say is right. But, but we're talking about 93 million miles away. I mean, I mean... I, 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 you can't even can't even pitch that in your mind how far that is. You know, I mean, I mean that's that. I, I don't have a problem with it. No matter how bright it is, it can't we can't see it. We wouldn't be able to see it that far. Okay. I, I, I but mean, but it, David, David, you, so I'm I'm really sorry for interrupting you, but you have to understand it. that you're saying that you know that we can't see it from 93 million miles away. That you know light can't go that far, but you're not actually providing us providing us with any kind of information of what restricts light from going that far. 
even in the face of me telling you, well, we have one light source that's one wattage, let's say, and then you have another light source that's much, much brighter, much, much more powerful, uh, and you can see it from farther away, or you can see it over long distances. So I'm asking you, what physical property of reality stops light from propagating throughout the universe, you know, indefinitely, if you will? Uh, what prevents that from happening? Evil. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure exactly what you're trying to say. Like, like what, what's holding it back? I, I, I just, I don't, I don't believe anything's holding it back because I don't think it's that far. I think, I, I think it's a lot closer than what, than what, than what it's said to be. I, I mean, the uh, well, um, go ahead. Well, no, I understand. I understand that that's what you think. I'm asking you to put yourself in my shoes and try to understand this because you're telling me that I can't see something from 93 million miles away, but yet you're not telling me what limits light given uh, it. it if it's powerful enough, then I don't see a reason why we shouldn't be able to see a light from hey, that Gallus, far away. Yeah. Gallus, I, th- I think I can help. Let me try. Um, David, yeah. I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, headlights on a, on a, on a road. Could I, could you see headlights coming towards you one mile out? Yes or no? Uh, depending on that, there's no, you know, um, looking like uh, like the atmospheric conditions. Depending on how the atmospheric conditions are, because I have not been able to see it that far away in certain days when when there was a lot of distortion. But I, I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking about, about I'm talking about just uh, just just the light. Okay, so it's it's nighttime, dark road. A car is coming towards you one mile out. Would you be able to see the headlights? Um, yeah, I believe so. I believe you should be able to see them. Perfect. Okay, um, so I went ahead and did the angular size calculation for headlights at 5,280 feet, and the angular size is 0.011. So now let's now let me go ahead and just put that into uh, perspective for you. Uh, that would be uh, that that would mean that the sun is 48 times bigger in the sky than those headlights, which you can see, and 48 times and while being a light source. So if the sun is the size asserted and at the distance asserted and is a light source, which it is, you you should be able to see it quite easily when you take into account that you could see headlights from a mile away and the angular size of those headlights would be 0.011 degrees, not 0.53 degrees. You're talking about the sun being 48 times bigger in your vision. So why shouldn't we be able to see the sun again? I mean, if we, even if you were able to see it, that doesn't prove that it's it's 93 million miles away. Even if, even if the, the numbers add up right, I mean, uh, they probably should, as a matter of fact, now I think about it, but but the, it, that, that doesn't mean that it's 93 million miles away. I mean, that's not... That's not what we what we see. We don't see that ninety three million miles away. We don't, that's not where it's perceived to be. Well, okay, okay. Listen, listen. I get I get your angle on this. Okay, I really do. But if all of the numbers work out for our model for the sun being ninety three million miles away, uh, if everything works out on that model, but on your model you have still a lot of unanswered questions. What should compel us? to believe in your model when it can't explain basic things. Like, for instance, if the sun was 3,000 miles away, you would have to explain what exactly it's made out of, how much light it's exactly giving off, um, why doesn't it set our atmosphere on fire? Uh, You have a lot of unanswered questions. I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you. I'm not trying to make you believe what I believe, but I, what I'm trying to tell you is that that okay. Suppose supposedly that the uh, we've known the Earth to be a globe round or whatever for two thousand two thousand years supposedly, right? That's what they say. Now now. If, if we had 2,000 years of time to test everything out, I'm pretty sure we'll get, it, get everything right, too, and make, and make it work as accurate as, as you have the heliocentric model working. But, we, I mean, then another thing, if we had the, the funds to do it, I mean, the, all, the, all this has been funded by a lot of different a lot of people, right? I mean, we've only had a couple of years, and we a lot in the, in the last couple of years to, to explain a lot of things. It couldn't be uh, before explained. Now. No. Now we're able to do things, but give us that time, give us the funds. Of course, we'll be able to ex- explain everything, just like the heliocentric model does. David, I'm going to give you one thing that you will not be able to explain, even if you had unlimited funds. Hold on a second, Red. Well, Hold on a second. Model. Hold on a second, David. Hold on a second, David. You have to mute when you're not speaking. I am getting so much feedback from you. The audience is complaining. I'm getting a headache. Please, sir, mute when you're not speaking. Thank you. 
thank you My for God. that also. You're getting salty. Okay, so here, uh, here's the thing that you will not be able to explain even if you had an unlimited number of funds. For the flat Earth theory to make any sort of sense, the sun would actually have to be what the flat earthers claim, around 35 miles wide, 3,000 miles up or whatever, in order for it to somewhat make sense with its position in the sky. But if that were the case, the angular size of the sun should change throughout the day. We should see it rise at one angular size, grow to three times bigger midday, and then shrink again to the size it was when it initially rose. The fact that the sun does not do that and will never do that, regardless how much money you throw at the problem, shows that you guys are never going to have a model that comports with reality, period. So simply throwing money at the problem is not going to arbitrarily make the Earth not a globe. The Earth is going to always be a globe, regardless how much money flat earthers throw at the problem. And basically, if a flat earther was to throw so much money that he made his own rocket to blast himself in- into space, well, guess who wouldn't be a flat earther anymore? Um, uh, two, two things that like, like you know as far as the anything that's in the sky it do, doesn't determine if the ground is flat or not i mean whatever whatever it is it does like the, the, they have no connection they're, they're not they're not they don't physically touch each other so they, they don't it doesn't mean whatever the what's going on in the skies does not show the shape or does not prove any of the shape anything in the shape of the earth uh and, it does and, that, and then second thing is like you said the second thing is that you said that well, it, it doesn't sizes and I, I've seen I've seen it change sizes and and that's with the filter on it there, there have been there have that has been caught where the sun does change but it's, it's it's different all the time because of the of the um atmospheric conditions well uh, yeah but I mean if you if you use a solar filter I mean it's not gonna I mean, it's not distorting the angular size of the sun. I mean, you understand what a solar filter is, right? Yeah, I understand what it is. Okay, what 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 is a solar filter? It's the the filter they they put on they put on uh, the, while the cameras they put it on and and it it um removes all the all the um the rays the light rays and everything it just shows what shows the sun directly. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure Red's Ritter can can go a bit more in depth, but I think that you got the basic yeah, idea yeah. here. It, it, it'll, it'll show you the, the actual size of the sun without the, you know, the the, the glaringness uh, of it or anything. Blindness. And, yeah. <laughs> and so w- when you actually use a solar filter and you track the sun, which you can find, I'm, I'm sure, all across YouTube, you will find that it doesn't actually change shape, that it actually, the angular size doesn't, doesn't change throughout the day. Whereas you should see drastic changes on the flat earth model. And that's what reds is, is trying to get across to you here. It should be a drastic change. It's not just like minor changes. It's a drastic change. It's a drastic change by a factor of three. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the way, no flat earth or video that I have ever seen that reports to have caught a changing angular size of the sun has it changing by that amount. And most of them don't even have a filter <laughs> on their camera to begin with. And they miss they misconstrue the changing in uh, apparent luminous uh, luminous whatever uh, luminescence Illuminati. whatever uh, luminatis. Yeah. What they're measuring is glare. They're just measuring glare. glare. That's right. That's that's I, all I, I they're, measuring. they're measuring. I, I, they're measuring I've glare. Seen it. I've seen it where where it has a solar filter on it, and I've seen it change. I don't know. I don't know about what you're talking about as far as three times, but I have seen seen the changes in the size and with the with the filter on it. There, there. See, the, here's the thing: the fact that you said that what you observe above your head cannot tell you anything about what is under your feet shows that despite your claims, you actually don't know the geometry behind the problem that you have when it comes to flat earth. Uh, You need to look at what I am saying in in every aspect. And the only way that I think you're actually going to get it, and no insult to you, but to actually draw it out. Draw a flat earth, draw a sun, have your scales accordingly, and look at the angle at which you are viewing it. And then determine its angular size at different points over the flat earth. You will quickly see the contradiction that lies within the flat earth model. And that contradiction is not going away regardless how much money you throw at the problem.
Thank you, heathens, for making it to the end. Did you leave a comment yet with your thoughts on how dumb as fuck David was in this whole thing? Let me know down below. Also, I want to know what your hypothesis is for what randomly stops light in the middle of the galaxy for no apparent reason. Let me know what you think What you think down below. While you're down there, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of dumb shit. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice, and I will see you heathens later.